Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I realized that I didn't make this video yet. You know, that's the thing about doing these ranking videos, is once you do one, you have to do all the others. And so, <laughs> it gets pretty uh, monotonous in a way, but whatever, it, it's still fun. So, one of the things that I knew that I needed to do <clears throat> is rank the characters for American Horror Story Season 3. And I feel like I should do this for every season. I should rank... I mean, wait a second, not rank. I should review the season, rank the characters, then at the very end rank all the seasons so far. I think that's fair. So, in terms of Season 3, I really felt like, and I know that this is going to be kind of a jerky thing to say, but I felt like, in general, there were only three good characters the whole season. Uh, good in terms of, they, they, really ha they were really good, and they, they did a good job acting. They had a good story until the story was trash like everything else in each season, like uh, they just devolve into trash. Uh, but then I feel like the rest of the people were just not as good because the show was not devoted to them. Like, I, I felt like these top three characters of the show, uh, so much of the show was devoted to them that you really did weren't able to attach on to any other characters as much because that they didn't have as much there and so, so there's a lot of that this season you know I really felt like in a way this season was just a little bit of a vehicle for a couple of actors to get their shine uh, but I still feel like it was a fail because all the stories ended up becoming train wrecks so first off now we have five categories which I edited and I renamed them because the original names were really uh, weird. <laughs> so the last category is fuck you and obviously that's, that's, it is what it is. The next category is dumb and dull. The next category is could have been better. The next category is had good moments. And the, the best category is just the best, even if the story sucked. So, and I had to do that because <laughs> even even the best characters, their stories turned out trash. So I can't, I can't pretend like, like oh, the, the best, because they had the best story. No, uh, all the stories turned out trash, pretty much. So in last place... I don't know how many characters these are, but uh, last place would be Axeman. Uh, this character was insufferable. He was really, really not... He, he didn't fit... He did not fit in any way, shape, or form. His whole romance thing with uh, Fiona was just complete trash. And it was definitely the turning point for trash for her character... You know, her her, char her character had a really good story until she was put together with him. You know, that's when it took a wrong turn. And his character, you know, at first I kind of liked him. I, I thought it was cool just in the episode where he was uh, first introduced. You know, where they show his backstory and they have the thing where that dumb bitch is too lazy to search the house, so she uh, summons him on the Ouija board. You know, I thought it could have just been a good two-parter. You know, it could have been like a good one or two-parter where, you know, it is a good message that you shouldn't use Ouija boards because this is what <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> and <laughs> And they brought out a serial killer. And it would have been so cool for them to have to face off against Axeman as he was, like, killing people around the house and things. You know, that would have been pretty good. 
pretty fucking good. Like, you could have had it where Madison throws a party or something, and then he starts killing people all around at the party, and, you know, it could have been good, but, uh, it was just, a very, very weird character choice here. Like, I, I really didn't get it, like, they didn't, they, they never really even went into, like, who he was as a character, like, to me, the only character that he had was that he liked jazz music, and he liked, uh, Jessica Lang's spit, and it's just not enough to constitute a character. I mean, those really aren't character traits at all, so that's, that's a fail. The next worst character is Evan Peters' mom, uh, the abusive mom, which there's a lot of, like, weird themes of, like, abusive parents this season. I guess that was some sort of a a theme in the season. Like, it, it, that wasn't very effective. And this character, she was evil, awful, horrible. Uh, I did not like her at all. I was glad at least that she got killed early and that we didn't have to suffer some sort of a weird story where she was like manipulating Zoe into thinking that she was good when in re reality she's an abuser. You know, because they kind of hinted at that when she called her and 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 told her something. I can't remember. And But then they didn't follow through and I was like, oh, thank God. I didn't want to watch that story at least. Uh, so I was glad, I was glad when she got killed. The ne next up is Queenie, and I know that'll make people go, nee, but I I'm sorry, but it's, it's true. This character, she started off, it, I was, I was gonna put her as the best character of the season, to be honest, but she made some of the most stupidest choices in the entire series. Like, I mean, the entire series. And that's saying something, because the characters in this series, they're known for making stupid-ass decisions. You know, you have, like, uh... Like, let's see. Just the, the, the fucking main guy in uh, season one, the, the, the dad, you know, he makes some terrible decisions, which he ends up having to atone for. And he actually has to pay for his bad decision-making. You know, they have this whole part where they demonize him and they make it out to, like, yeah, he's so terrible, he's so evil, his family doesn't want to be with him, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but with Queenie, Queenie can just do whatever the fuck she wants. She can go around being a serial killer. She can, uh, she can betray someone and, and do a dumb thing that she did there. And she can do all, and she can betray her whole team her whole fucking house of witches she can just betray them all and then oh it's okay because she, she got mad at them so they, they should be sorry and it's like no sorry <laughs> but you're trash you know she started off really cool though she's a human voodoo doll she had a funny backstory scene uh she was pretty cool I really liked her. I thought, like, she could do some badass things. And that she doesn't really have to worry about things as much as other characters. Uh, but then... The first weird thing that she did... Was they had this Minotaur character. And... She basically... It, it, the story is supposed to be that she... Will kill the Minotaur so that she'll protect... Uh, Delphine and that, that will show Delphine that like oh maybe I should rethink my entire outlook on uh, race and people and everything uh, but instead she starts having sex with the Minotaur with this demonic entity this demonic creature uh, she starts having sex with it and I thought oh wow <laughs> that was a that was an odd decision, and it was all because of a throwaway comedic line where she says, Dr. Phil says that food takes the place for real love that's missing in a person, and, and I need some love. 
And so it's all based around like a throwaway line that she's having sex with the Minotaur. And then guess what? The Minotaur, uh, he, 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 he screws her so hard that she's messed up on the inside or something. I don't know. They didn't really explain that very well. And that's another thing is, you know, she's a human voodoo doll. So if, if he was doing that stuff to her, why wouldn't it hurt him? Like, they didn't really explain that very well. Uh, so, and then the next thing that she did that pissed me off was, you know, they had this really good uh, relationship going on with her and Delphine, and it was kind of cool because you didn't expect that. And, and it could have been something that, you know, grew over the season, and maybe at a certain point one of them would betray the other, or maybe at a certain point, they would just full on team up and they would full on uh be best friends but instead uh she goes over to Marie's coven at the salon the shitty salon the shithole salon and she has some gumbo and she decides that because the gumbo was so good that she needs to betray Delphine and so she does this cruel thing where she takes Delphine to the salon and makes her think that, like, she's her friend and that she's going to a salon to get a, a makeover and a haircut. And then, of course, instead, she turns her over to her uh, arch nemesis who, who made her immortal to begin with. And to me, that was just completely unforgivable. And and not only that, but she also betrayed the entire coven, the entire uh, good coven. Uh, I don't know what to call them, you know, the, the fucking, the main coven that the show's about. She betrays all of them because they're mean to her or something, like really, really strange uh, behavior. <laughs> because like, say what you will about Nan, but Nan never betrayed them because they were quote-unquote mean to her and then on top of that there's this weird story where like Queenie's like trying to re-educate Delphine on like her racism but it's weird because she was already getting re-educated by Queenie sacrificing herself for her with the Minotaur and it's like that was that was part of that was progress and then you betraying her and turning her over like uh like she's nothing and she can just be tortured and and she tortured her uh chopped her head off made her starve chopped her hand off blah 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 oh yeah drained her of blood uh you know that's not going to help race relations and so and so I just don't understand, like, like, honestly, like, Delphine, you know, she, she shouldn't be racist, but she should have stayed mad at, at Queenie, uh, for what she did, and, but then they had this, oh, they had this story where, like, Queenie basically just becomes wallpaper, like, she's, she comes back to the coven after, Marie comes back and she basically just forgets all about what happened and and she kind of acts like they're the ones at the original coven who should be sorry to her and it's just, it's ridiculous it's just so ridiculous it, I, the the stupid decisions that she made in the season were just mind-boggling i mean they were so infuriating that it it it, it, it genuinely pisses me off because it, it just makes me think like they ruined this really cool character like i was really i was really liking her and i thought like oh i can't wait to say uh queenie was my favorite character and be like the you know the exception where you know everyone they all just say uh certain characters are their favorite and i'll be the one who says queenie is my favorite but then she made these dipshit decisions <clears throat> excuse me I just had dinner next up is Madison Montgomery Ugh. 
this is the typical mean girl McGee that you see in all the shitty high school movies where there's a mean girl. She's mean and she's full of herself and she's a white trash bitch who's like privileged and just completely uh, self-absorbed. Oh, but then she has a heart of gold and she's actually really sad on the inside. So that excuses her bad behavior and her evil, uh, soulless nature. Like that, that excuses it is that she's sad. <laughs> and so like, I swear, like so much of the season is just devoted to giving this bitch easy sympathy points like uh in the first episode she gets uh date raped at a frat party and they they did that on purpose they did that as writers because they knew if they didn't have something bad like that happen to her that you wouldn't even care about her character you know <laughs> you'd be like ew i don't like her i want uh zoe to be the star i don't i don't want this awful one-dimensional shallow bully to be the the star of the show uh and then after that of course they have this whole thing where she has like this stupid monologue where she's she says all the like the you could play like a mean girl mcgee bingo game where she talks about i'm numb on the inside uh, I, I, I eat stuff and then I throw it up. Uh, I take drugs. And it's just like all the typical pity points, all the typical, like, oh, you should feel sorry for this person because she's in pain. <laughs> and it's like, nah, that's a, this isn't uh, getting to the root of the problem. And so her character, she never really does anything to make you like her. Like, especially the thing with, she got gang raped, so she goes out and she kills the whole fraternity, including people who didn't even do anything to her, like uh, Evan Peters. And and I just thought, like, ew, I don't, I don't like this person. I think she's a, a typical bully, uh, weird, just, ew. <laughs> just nothing about her is, is good. And then they have the story where she gets killed. That's the only time in the whole season where I felt any sort of sympathy for her. But even then I thought, oh, that was a really good story. I really liked that Fiona killed her. Uh, that was so unexpected and so uh, cool. But then they ruined that and they brought her back so that she could force Zoe and Evan Peters into a polynamorous quote-unquote relationship uh, that they didn't want to be in and uh, so she could rape Evan Peters and then finally she gets killed after she refuses to bring Zoe back to life and she's so stupid uh, another stupid character that she doesn't teleport away from Evan Peters as he strangles her uh, pretty uh, dumb to say the least and finally, at the top of the fuck you category is Stevie Nicks. She couldn't act worth a damn. She was only in this season so that they could, uh, you know, be mainstream. And they were like, ooh, it would be really cool this season if we had an actual musician on the show. And let's just shoehorn, shoehorn her in. She won't be very good at all as a character. She'll just kind of be like a, hey, look, it's me. And it's like, no, no. Ugh. These characters. Terrible characters. So now we have Dumb and Dull. These next two characters, I don't even know what their names are. Uh... You got the flamboyant guy who died this year, unfortunately. Uh, it's sad that he passed away in real life. Uh, and then you got the, the other woman, this, this old woman with the, with the hat. Uh, there are these people for like a council of some kind, or they're not the council or something. And 
they're just these dim-witted idiots who sit around and, like, let people come up with these bullshit stories in front of them so that they can make, like, a wrongful execution happen. Like, they are some of the most gullible, terrible at their jobs, uh, people. Like, they're supposed to be investigating this horrible crime, uh, this murder of Madison Montgomery, and they, they don't really do anything. They just kind of sit there and let themselves be manipulated. And it's just, it's pathetic. It's really pathetic. Uh, and, and they never redeem themselves. Both of them end up getting killed, uh, which I was very happy to see both of them get killed because I, I was really not happy about having to suffer through more story with them. Next up is Evan Peters. You know, this character, he started off really good. He seemed like... He was completely different than the first two seasons. He's this kind of good good guy, frat boy. And then they, they did a really shocking thing where he gets killed in the first episode, uh, which was very interesting. And then they bring him back to life, only to turn him into basically a sex toy. And he's like a Frankenstein monster sex toy... Uh, and then he becomes like a butler at the end, and oh god, this character, like, they ruined this character, he hardly had anything to do, I wouldn't be surprised if, if when they wrote this, they wrote it like on purpose because he had some sort of another project, so they wrote it to where he was like just a zombie, because that's what he was, he, he didn't have anything. And it was it was sad because I thought like that there would be a really cool moment, like a moment, like a cheerworthy moment where he would snap out of his Frankenstein uh, mentality and he would be back to his full self. And it could have been so cool and it, it could have been so uh, cheerworthy. It would have been a top tier uh, moment in the series and instead... Uh, he never comes back. He's just a sex object for uh, these teenage girl uh, characters to have sex with and rape him over and over and over again. Uh, really bad decision with that character. The next characters, I'm just going to group these two together too. Uh, you have the, the, the next door neighbor and her son. So this is another, another story where it's all about an abusive parent. And she did a really good job. I'm not saying that these actors are bad. I'm saying that the stories that were written for their characters were bad. And that their characters made stupid decisions or they just weren't very good. Weren't full characters in general. So, this whole next door neighbor story is something I didn't really talk about very much uh, in my reviews, and it's because it was really kind of like insignificant. You know, I, w I was really into the story at first. I thought it was cool how Madison uh, was interested in him, and Nam was too, and it was it was like a twist that he would be interested in Nan. Uh, instead of Madison Montgomery, uh, the trashy, mean girl McGee. And so I really like that story. I really like the relationship that he had with Nan. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it didn't really go anywhere interesting at all. Uh, I, I didn't really like that. It, it was just completely pointless. It's too bad, though, because both actors did a good job uh, especially the mom, who was like a, oh god, she was evil. Really, really evil. Next up, this is the last person in the Dumb and Dull list. And this is Myrtle Snow. She is what you call an aesthetic character. And what an aesthetic character is, is it's a character 
who was drawn on paper and then written after the drawing was done. This character is just for people to cosplay. People can cosplay, they can say, hey look, I'm Myrtle Snow. And they can wear the little Ronald McDonald anime uh, wig, and they can wear the big kooky glasses, and they can wear the, the weird costume with the the yellow gloves and things and pretend like they're some sort of fashionistas you know some sort of trendy witchy bitch uh, fashionista but that's really all there is to this character she's a trash character she's like a goody goody two shoes and uh, she's supposed to be Fiona's arch nemesis but then that kind of peters out as the season goes on uh, which is sad because at least if she I don't know though there wasn't really a villain I mean a big issue with this season was the fact that there was not a villain you know <laughs> there wasn't any villain and so like just everyone was fighting each other uh, so that that was a problem as well in general with the season but this character she made some another character who made some stupid stupid decisions I mean just really really bizarre choices uh, the thing with you know thinking that Misty Day should be the supreme is probably one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard so her character made stupid decisions and she was basically there for cosplay next up is Fiona's mom and this is could have been better category. Fiona's mom, she was good. I mean, I liked her for the little tiny amount of time that she had on screen, uh, but she just really didn't have enough time to constitute really her being a great character. They made her out to be this like really noble, honorable supreme. Uh, but we don't really get to see much of what she did to make her worthy of that title. You know, we, we she just kind of seems like, eh, she's good, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, she, she she didn't really care about the bullying going on in her fucking uh, school with uh, young Fiona being bullied by a... Uh, who was she bullied by? I can't even remember. Next up is the red-headed witch who was killed by the, the witch hunter husband of Cordelia. She really didn't have anything to her. You know, they, they, they did this whole sequence where you think she's just a whore who's cheating with him and she knows. But then it turns out she, she doesn't know that he's cheating on his wife. And then you find out she's a witch, and it's like this whole like thing where they do these twists, 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 and it's really kind of stupid. Uh, her character, she's not really interesting at all. You do feel sorry for her a little bit because they show her story and how she had this like failed relationship, marriage, and so you do feel bad for her, but she didn't have much. She was a a victim character. She was not there to be an epic S-tier character. Next up is the Minotaur. The Minotaur, he could have been a powerhouse villain. And I was really looking forward to seeing what he would do. And he was also, in his life, he was the lover of Marie. And they never really played that had it had that play into anything so uh his character was kind of a disappointment and they had the ending to his story is that fiona finds him and she kills him off screen and chops his head off and i thought that's another weak anticlimactic ending i mean it was cool i did like uh her getting the minotaur head but that's another thing it's like she killed her lover I guess you could say like she killed she killed him and so like I don't know why 
Marie would ever team up with her. That's an... God, what a trash season this was. Next up is young, young, young Fiona as a kid. I don't know why they even put her on this list. I mean, she's only in the show for like one flashback sequence. And what happens is they just show her getting bullied. And then she throws milk on her bully. And then gets uh, defended by the Axe Man. So it's really a sequence that's all around the Axe Man. Uh, so her character, you know, she, she didn't have anything interesting. She shouldn't even be on this list. It's stupid. Like, why would you have a... Th- th- oh. Next up is Papa Legba. This character, he's a very generic, kooky bad guy. Uh, He's a demonic character. He is pretty cool. I love his costume. I think he did a great job acting. Uh, But his character, it it didn't really seem like there was much to him. It didn't seem like there was much logic to, you know, building a story around him. You know, they should have developed him more. They should have had him more do more things than just, like, show up and laugh, basically. Next up is Spaulding, who, weirdly enough, is dressed as the butler from Scary Movie 2. Which I don't know why they did that, because he's supposed to be like a serious character. Uh, This is the butler. They had this really good storyline where he's uh, friend-zoned by Fiona, and he's been loyal to her ever since he was a a young man. And he cut out his tongue for her. He had multiple people, or just, he covered up multiple crimes with her. And they had this really good character arc where he finally admits that she did the deed. uh, Killing someone, doing something bad. And it's just unfortunate because in the second half of the season... For some reason, he shows up as a ghost after he gets killed for no reason. And he's just kind of useless. He has this thing where he steals a baby. And then we never find out what happens to the baby. It's pretty uh, useless. Next up is Zoe. She's at the top of the could have been better list. Zoe was the main character of the show. And for a main character, I don't think she was very good. Uh, She had this cool power where she could kill people by having sex with them. And they never went anywhere with that. They just kind of didn't do anything with that. Her character, she... I really liked her. I thought that, you know, this is probably the most likable that she's been. Because she's the person coming into this world... For the first time, and it's interesting to see things from her point of view. But then over the course of the season, she she doesn't really do much of anything. She kind of fades into the background, making stupid little decisions for stupid other things to happen. Her best thing that she does is on Halloween, uh, where she kills all the zombies at the same time, uh, making Marie uh, wake up out of her her uh, spell casting and fall to the ground and it was cool because Marie could sense like this really strong power and I was really excited I thought like ooh I can't wait it, it almost felt like Zoe was the good guy Marie was the bad guy like and it would have been really cool to see them face off with each other in like a witch battle too bad that they didn't really think about that kind of thing so now these are the had good moments characters so first off is nan uh she's a a clairvoyant and and she she was pretty good i liked her uh thoroughly throughout the season i also kind of like the ending i like the her her in fact she might be the only character whose ending i liked where she ended up getting killed by Marie and Fiona at the same time. 
and then Papa Legba takes her as like an assistant. I thought that was kind of cool. It was, it was a cool twist on things because I don't know. It, it felt kind of unexpected. It was like I don't know. I I like that ending actually. Uh, and she also I lo- I love the way that she defended the next door neighbor boy. Uh, and I thought she was cool. I, I really thought that she was a, a standout character. Next up is the, the husband of Cordelia. Now at first, I would have put him in the fuck you category. Because they show him cheating on her and, they, and, they sh- and it, 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 he looks terrible. He's written terribly. He's very, very stiff and boring and shitty. But then, they have this really cool backstory reveal where it's yet another abusive parent. Where his father is a witch hunter, forced him to become a witch hunter. And it, it's this really like dark conflict where he's, he's basically put himself into a corner. Where he has to either kill all the people at the good coven... Or, uh, Marie is going to stab him in the heart with uh, the voodoo doll of him. And so, it, it was a really dark story. And he ended up uh, protecting Cordelia and going against Marie. And basically sh- killing every single one of the witches at Marie's uh, coven. Except for her and Queenie. And uh, I, I did think it was kind of a cool ending for him because he, you know, he was still a piece of shit, but at that point, like, you just had to, you know, kind of zoom out and look at the fact that his father, uh, the witch hunter, forcing him to become a witch hunter, you know, the the, the reason that he was in that spot was because of the, the bad parenting with uh, this witch hunter business. Uh, and so he was a good character. It's too bad that uh, they they wasted the witch hunter storyline. Those characters kind of went, came, and went in like two seconds. And at the top of the had good moments category is Cordelia. You know, I really loved her character a lot. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't like a lot of the decisions she made. You know. Looking back, it, it's it's kind of cringeworthy the way that this is supposed to be a school. Cordelia doesn't protect. She doesn't protect any of the people there. She doesn't teach them much of anything. And she has no idea what's going on. It, it's so, like, ridiculous. But then they have this great story arc where she loses her eyesight and it makes her able to have psychic visions and suddenly she's able to see the truth and see everything that's going on uh and i thought that's a really good uh story i love it i love that story a lot then they ruin that by having myrtle snow give her her eyesight back and then they made it even worse because Cordelia then stabs her eyes out so that she can get the psychic powers again. And then they made that even worse by... uh, She becomes Supreme and then she gets her eyesight back. Even though they stated that the Supreme had to already be in perfect health before they became the Supreme. Now this character... She could have been a character who was a... who redeemed herself through the season. You know, she could have been a character that did some badass things by the end. Uh, but I really felt like her character was another letdown character. You know, I, I didn't feel like just excited about her story of it by the end. Uh, she really kind of teetered out until she's the Supreme. And what does she do? She cries. That's what she does. She talks to Fiona, her mom, and she cries. Now these characters are the best, even if the story sucked. So you have teenage Fiona, 
who she did a great job of playing like a evil manipulative you know she was pretty good I liked her she wasn't as good as Jessica Lang obviously uh, but she was good for the time that she had so I have to put her there you know it is close though because I kind of like Cordelia more than her it's just that uh, Cordelia did some stupid things as well Next up is Misty Day. I mean, talk about wasted characters. This character was so cool. Uh, she was so uh, pure and badass and had these great powers. And she had this kind of interesting story where she can do these uh, really magical things, but she can't fit in anywhere. And so she's like this fake swamp hippie. And, and it's it's just kind of an act that she's putting on. Uh, but they ruin it because they kind of like throw her character away so that she can't uh, interfere with the plot and bring people back to life over and over and over again, which she was already doing. And then they ruin it by having her get stuck in hell and she gets killed off in like two seconds in the finale. And that was a total waste of her character. Now this is the third best character, Marie. She would have been the best character of the season if they had given her more story in the second half. You know, in the second half of the season, uh, her, her character, her story becomes awful where she teams up with Fiona. She becomes kind of like a just kind of like a throwaway character uh, she really isn't very good in the second half of the show but in the first half she is really really cool badass she has these really strong epic powers uh, and it seems like she is really really like on a next level it's just that second half really ruined her the second best character of the season was Delphine I mean, really, I did think she gave the best performance acting-wise. Uh, I thought that, you know, it was really cool because they gave... To me, I, I would have done it to where she became a hero uh, in the season and that she would, you know, change. Because that was the whole point, was that you'd see these flashbacks of her. She's evil, she's evil. And then she'd change and in the year of like 2012 or 2013 and it would have been such a great character arc because you think about all these like spirits who are evil people who are evil uh you know a lot of them probably become good once they die you know they make some sort of a transformation on the other side and so it, it would have been so cool to see that happen with this character and it was really shitty how they just kind of made her, like, she is on the path to becoming good, and then she becomes evil again, and then she, she it's like she can't resist putting blood on her face, like, it's really odd and strange. And then she has, finally, her, her last thing is that she, and it's some sort of, like, a weird political thing to a political agenda where she goes to her own house and she's rewriting history to make it seem like she never killed anyone and she finally got her makeover and uh I don't know it was really disappointing to be honest she was a really good villain in the past and I really liked how in the present that she wasn't a villain anymore uh, well, she, it was like she was trying to change, and it, 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 that was a really good story. That was my favorite part of the season, and they ruined it by having it uh, turn out to where she is just evil, you know, because she was evil already, so she's still going to be evil. Uh, it didn't make much sense. The best character of the season was Fiona. Fiona just completely, I mean, 
she owned the role. She was the character. I mean, she did such a badass job. She seemed like the most powerful character on the show. Uh, she seemed like more of a protagonist than Zoe, the supposed protagonist. She did some really cool things, killing the Supreme. And then she kills Madison Montgomery, another badass thing she does. Uh, I really liked her character a lot, even though in the second half, she just becomes Axeman's girlfriend, basically. Uh, I didn't like that part of her character. Uh, but I did like her ending. Her ending was very uh, good, where she is in hell and she's stuck with the axe man and it's this really dark horrifying ending where she her whole life she would use people and you and manipulate them and then finally she uses the wrong person she uses a serial killer and she ends up being stuck with him in the afterlife and i thought that that was a really dark ending for her character i really liked that i thought it was really a uh, really cool, and a really unexpected, like, ugh. it was really uncomfortable to watch, actually, because he, he was turning out to be abusive, too, and so you just, <laughs> you think, like, you know, honestly, he, he could probably kill her over and over and over again, uh, so that's another uh, uncomfortable thing, but her character... She had a really good story, and she it seemed like she wanted to remain young, and she had this typical like story where she didn't want to pass on to the next generation. She didn't want to give up being supreme. There was that one thing of like that one really good line where she said, "We don't need a new supreme. We just need a new rug, or something," because she killed Madison on the rug. And I thought, she's a badass character. I really liked her character, regardless of what they did with her in the second half. So that's it for the Coven characters. I think that, really, there were three fantastic characters. Delphine, Fiona, and Marie. And the problem with the finale was that all the top three characters were gone before the finale even started. So, uh, it was like kind of like inevitable for the finale to be trash uh, because it, the, the top three characters are gone. So, anyways, please like this video, comment, and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to see more American Horror Story videos, you know, I know a lot of people disagree. I don't really care. Uh, I just, it to me, it really has a lot to do with the writing rather than the characters in general. Like, I loved all the actors. I thought all the actors did a good job. It's just the writing. And I, I always try to emphasize that it's it's always the writing problem. Writing is the main problem consistently nowadays. So goodbye everybody, see you soon.